Hey there, welcome to People of the Free Gift, and uh, due to a lot busier schedule that I'm going to be having uh, more recently, I decided that I'm going to go to just question and answer videos, um, and I'm going to try and do these once a week, and just so that I can get back to you, and then um, I am going to be sending a link once I upload the video, um, just to let you know I've answered your question and feel free to just keep them coming if you comment on any video then it'll show up in my I haven't responded to column yet and uh, then I can make sure I include it in these videos and so let's go ahead and jump in with the questions for today so from the is the new world translation a reliable Bible translation in the bottom line from B Truth, bottom line, any Bible verses that cannot be found in ancient Bible manuscripts will not be in the New World Translation Bible. It is painstakingly accurate. Many other translators have done the same thing, being concerned about truth and accuracy. There are many, many Bible translations that have omitted God's name Jehovah nearly 7,000 times and replaced it with Lord. That comes from the Jewish tradition that the name of God is un pronounceable and so they whenever you see the tetragrammaton in the Hebrew Bible they would always say Adonai which is the generic word for Lord out of respect and not wanting to take the name of God in vain and so your emphasis upon having the correct name of God has no real merit um, throughout Jewish history into Christian history and Jehovah is almost certainly a, a inc inaccurate way of rendering that. If you're going to say the name of God, then you know at least be accurate to what you know the how the Jewish people have always said it. Why not just say Adonai the way they did? If you're really concerned about that, so you know falls off. Uh, do you even care? Other alterations and examples, a familiar account of John 8, 1 through 11, in the authorized version about an old adulterous woman about to be stoned, and that reports to Jesus is saying, let him that was without sin cast the first stone. It was not in the earliest manuscripts, so later editions of the Bible have removed it or put it in a footnote to refine the Bible text. Other editions were also found and deleted. Honestly, most scholars do believe that that was not in the original text, I happen to disagree with that, and I'm not going to get into why I, I believe that right now, but um, I, I do believe that there is, um, and one of the reasons, I guess I should say, is that almost all of the New Testament was quoted by the early church fathers, um, and even before the earliest appearance in a manuscript that we have of those texts, and I actually believe that the Alexandrian texts, they come out of Alexandria, Egypt, and there was a lot of Gnosticism there, and a lot of the verses that seem to be taken out or don't appear, even in some of the more modern translations like the NIV, you can show that a lot of them have to do with the virgin birth, the deity of Christ, um, it's something that affects what Jesus accomplished on the cross, um, so you can see very Gnostic influences that would have been taken out, little alterations that thankfully do actually appear in other manuscripts. And I do believe that those are more accurate. But I, like I said, I can't get into that in depth right now. So going on, in more serious cases, tampering has been done with the text to support a false teaching, such as at 1 Timothy 3.16. The authorized version states God was manifest in the flesh as opposed to he who was manifested in the flesh. And, uh, but you have to ask when there's a he in the Greek, what is the subject? Because that is just picking up on a subject that was already introduced earlier. And um, again, there are some, some manuscripts that have God, some that say he. And um, but there's other verses that clearly state uh, that Jesus is God, and his constant references back to Old Testament prophecies or verses alluding to God, even the word Lord being ascribed to Jesus, the word glory being ascribed to Jesus, 
all of those things point to the fact that he is God. So, which is correct. If it's the first, it would appear that Jesus is God, contrary to passages that say he is God's son. And even the Pharisees picked up on the fact that Jesus, saying he was the son of God, made him equal with God. He was claiming equality and a unique and separate relationship from any but other human who's ever lived. Uh, by calling himself the Son of God. And he's called the Son of God because he was born of Mary as a human. And so as a human, he is the Son of God. It's not that he was... Uh, so you're, you're misunderstanding the verses in the Trinity and a lot of different things when you talk about that. So in older manuscripts, the words for God and who, masculine, were similar. Greek letters, who, masculine, Greek letters, God. Recent manuscripts usually had Greek letters as or the equivalent, but in the manuscript found by Tischendorf, it is Greek letters or of who referring to Jesus, not God. A scribe then changed the term so it read God. The Alexandrian manuscript of the fifth century makes us wonder if it was an innocent mistake. At first glance, it appeared to be Greek letters, but by examination with the microscope, it was found to have been originally Greek letters, and a much later hand added the lines to change it. Recent versions have refined the text by reading properly. He who was manifested in the flesh. Okay, so uh, when you talk about accuracy, I, I just have to point out John 1.1. 1, 1. The New World Translation inserts a God when it, the Greek could not be more emphatic. It actually places, it says literally, and God was the Word. So you can't, it's the same God that was in John 1.1, 1, 1, that's in John 1.2, and Jesus is, is God and he's with God. And I don't know many other places in the Bible where you have an explicit teaching that there is only one God, but that God is in within two, at least two persons. And so the fact that you guys blatantly mistranslated that, not to mention Colossians 1, where you guys inserted other, that Jesus created all things, and now it's all other things, which that's not at all in the Greek text at all. And so those blatant additions and mistranslations. Um, another one would be Hebrews 1, where the angels do obeisance to him, right? So instead of worshiping him, they're just showing him respect. And that was a blatant change in the New World Translation. A blatant example going on, blatant example of tampering was also found in 1 John 5, 7, where the phrase, in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, was added. Again, that was quoted by the church fathers before the earliest text that even it appears in. And the text honestly doesn't make any sense if you take that phrase out. I know a lot of scholars side with you and say it wasn't part of the original text. I don't think that uh, you can make sense of the text. The same with Mark 16 and the supposed early ending. Um, it doesn't make any sense. The, you know, the, why the woman caught in adultery, why you don't think, what is your problem with that text even being there? So again, you're pointing out things that ultimately, if you use the same argument, they're going to point back to the New World Translation being a completely false and blatantly wrong uh, mistranslation to fit the, the theology of the Jehovah's Witnesses. So, the evidence indicates that the manuscript now found at Trinity College Dublin was purposely written about 1520 to insert that spurious verse. Basically, all modern versions have omitted this glaring tampering. Accurate Bible translations were needed because most Bible translations have been altered. They deliberately removed Almighty God's name nearly 7,000 times and replaced it with Lord, which is the title. Altering the Bible is wrong. The Bible issues this warning. Again, that goes right back on the New World Translation as well. And he quotes from Revelation 22, don't add or take away from the book, words of this book, which are having to do with Revelation. You didn't even quote with the book of Revelation um, in any of that. So that's an irrelevant argument. Um, so what is the divine name King James Bible? The divine name King James Bible is not a revision of the Bible's message. Nothing has been added to the Bible or taken away from it. 
It is the King James Bible with no changes to the text, except to use the ancient manuscripts as the authority and put God's name where it belongs. How do we know where God's name belongs? The translators of the authorized King James Version of the Bible, the translators knew that God's name is Jehovah and put it in the Bible in four places and in over 6,000 places, put Lord where they could see God's name. There are now thousands upon thousands of ancient handwritten copies of the Bible that clearly show where God's name appears in the Bible. It is necessary to know God's name. No man comes unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I'll raise him up the last day. It is written, it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has heard, learned of the Father comes unto me. We didn't say this, Jesus did. Okay, and I don't I disagree. No one comes to the Father unless Jesus draws him. And you know that the Father draws him, and you know how can they believe unless they've heard? I I don't disagree with all of that. And then he puts a link where you can find this new translation of the Bible from the video Jehovah's Witnesses or Gnostic Arians. And uh, Timothy Lane says, when you mess up in one area, it leads to a cascade of errors. You have to start twisting everything to fit your error. It's gone so far that the JWs had to rewrite the Bible in order to defend their error, and their edits aren't even consistent with their other edits. Eventually, your errors get silly, like, like taking issue with the shape of the cross. A completely irrelevant objection with only one purpose, to confuse the Christian and retake control of a conversation. Who cares about facts and history when you can have a tool that powerful? I completely agree. It's a very powerful tool, and it is intentional, and it's perp it, there's a reason why they do it. It's because, and I had somebody within my own congregation whose wife came to me because they were concerned that they had been talking, their husband had been talking to the Jehovah's Witnesses, and because they were... They had him convinced on the, the shape of the cross being really a stake. Then it opened the door for him to start wondering, well, what other things do I not understand in the Bible? What other things have I, I've been taught wrongly? Now, of course, it wasn't a stake. We can prove that historically, biblically, you know, all of those ways. But that's why they do it. Is so that they can get their foot in the door. If they can get you convinced as a Christian that something was mistaught to you and that they have the truth, now the ball's in their court and they can convince you that their New World Translation is better than ours, that you know Christianity has been misinterpreted and um, I just spread wrongly to the masses over all these years, then um, they can do that. And so... Thank you for your question. From the video, Modern Day Prophets, uh, Bill Johnson and Mike Bickle, in their own words, uh, their false teaching about prophecy and modern day prophets. Uh, we say, we have Mona B who says, Oh, Billy Boy, lover of words, so many words, he just smashes them together. And I would say, absolutely, thank you for the comments. I um, wanted to do a series, actually, at one point, in which I was kind of um, like uh, Bill Johnson's fortune cookie, like sayings. Um, but I just, honestly, I have, I have not had the time with that. Um, you know, if you want to help with that, honestly, and help me justify actually spending a little bit more time on YouTube in my schedule, um, I am almost at the 800 mark in terms of subscribers. Once I hit that 1,000 mark, then a lot of different things can happen for this channel. So if you know other people who love apologetics, then sh please share this channel with them or share my videos uh, that you think that they would like and encourage them to subscribe because uh, with your guys' help, we can honestly get to that 1,000 subscriber mark and that opens the doors not just for Google AdSense revenue, but also just like affiliate marketing, uh, like Amazon influencer channel, you know, like page potentially where I can just recommend really great, you know, Christian books in general and then get a commission uh, on any time you guys purchase any of them, things like that. And so I would really love that. Um, we've had the blessing of interviewing like several people on the channel recently. Uh, that I'm kind of blown away that they accepted the invitation. And so if you value the stuff on this channel, then please get the word out. And so moving on, 
from the video Great Commission Equals Seven Mountain Mandates, and this is the words of C. Peter Wagner. Um, so check out that video. But uh, we have Brother John Elving, who says, please, could you give me a link to this video of Peter Wagner? I would love to use it in one of my videos. This is just unreal how satanic his teaching is. Truly amazing how this man and Lance Welno have infected so many people with their heretical teaching. Thank you for the video. God bless your ministry, Brother John Eno. Okay, so he gives me his email, and so <laughs> sorry that that showed up on the screen. Um, but what I will say is this, that um, you can just simply type into the YouTube search, you know, see Peter Wagner, Great Commission. Uh, I honestly would have to do the same to find the link at this point. Um, it's different things that I found and stumbled upon as I was looking for just actual quotes out of these guys' mouths when I was trying to discern uh, what is just rumor and what are these guys actually teaching and I was just kind of blown away by what was actually coming out of their mouths directly without having to make anything more out of it. And so uh, thank you for your comment. Thank you for your support of the channel. Um, but you're going to have to search that out yourself. So from the video, we are gods from the mouth of Bill Johnson, Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, and others you hear... Um, straight out of their mouths, they're teaching that we are little gods. Uh, so Sheeps and uh, Louvbex J says, Sheeps and wolves clothing come out from their lies. They lie, twist the true word of God, Jesus is Lord. Absolutely. Thank you for your encouraging words, brother. And, um, and uh, so anyway, those are the questions for today. Make sure that you comment on any video of mine Check out some of these videos if you haven't seen some of the ones that uh, were featured this week. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.